Hello everyone, I am Benoît Dora with Rodent Schwartz and I am glad to present you the results of our joint research with Ericsson AB in Sweden on validation of over-the-air testing accuracy at mid-range distance for massive mammal base stations. As 5G radio base stations are evolving into electrically large massive MIMO or active antenna systems with beam steering capabilities, it has become critical to reduce the footprint of far-field testing facilities, especially as the test capacity needs are growing. Recent findings that we published demonstrated that over-the-air measurements around the peak of radiation at distances much shorter than the front of her distance still yield acceptable accuracy. We present here in this paper an additional validation of these results uh, with the application to commercial 5 gnr massive MIMO base stations. A general mathematical analysis is provided, and we demonstrate with that that antenna arrays can be expected to show far-field convergence at a distance as low as around 20% of the frontal for distance. Here is the problem we are looking at. The device on the test, or our antenna system under consideration, is measured in a spherical test range where a probe scans the surface sigma at a radius r or range length r. The DUT radiates the electric and magnetic fields, E and H, which are the time harmonic vector fields, outside the minimum sphere, and this minimum sphere containing the DUT is of diameter d. The question we are looking at answering is where does the effective far field distance, or EFFD, start, meaning where in space E and H approach within a defined margin the asymptotic 1 over K0R magnitude dependence, where K0 is a free space wave number. Let me give you first a brief summary of the previous findings. We identified a closed form formula for the EFFD for a 0.5 dB tolerance. This means that for a measurement distance larger than this RDE distance written here, we expect that the radiation intensity in the peak of radiation of the DUT would be within 0.5 dB from the far field EIRP. This RDE distance was obtained from the analysis of the gain over quality factor convergence over distance and using spherical wave expansion to deduce the maximal spherical harmonic radial order to consider as impacting this gain over Q. And we did use here this n max order of which you see the formula there. Applying this RDE distance to the example of a radio base station operating at 1880 MHz with 1.4 meter radiation aperture, you see that the frown of her distance would have told us that a 25 meter range length is necessary to accurately assess the far field EIRP of the base station. But with this RDE formula, we say that 8.6 meter only are necessary to measure with 0.5 dB accuracy the far field radiation in the peak of the pattern. The paper uh, that we list here, which is presented in the session three of the AMSA 21, provides a generalization of the findings and of the formula uh, with Nmax for arbitrary deviations to far field condition. This means that it tells us how many spherical radial orders to consider depending on the target maximal deviation from the far field EIRP. And this depends on the parameters beta, alpha one and alpha zero here. The spherical wave expansion formalism is also interesting as it reveals the process of formation of the far field radiation pattern over distance. Here we take the example of a 20 dBi standard gain horn at 28 GHz. We applied spherical wave expansion to the radiation of this horn, and then in dashed lines we represented the ENH cuts of directivity when filtering out all modes strictly superior in radial order to 11. The dashed lines represent the same filtering with, but with inclusion of all modes up to radial order 68, which pretty much means that all the energy in the spherical wave spectrum is included. When comparing the two plots or the two sets of curves, we see that the peak of radiation is well reconstructed with the first 
11 radial orders, even 10 dB below the peak. And this number 11 is given as an output of the Nmax formula for 0.5 dB tolerance, which we showed on the previous slide. These modes with radial order up to 11 are actually converging to their asymptotic far field form at the RDE distance that we just presented. When we look at the side lobes, we see more deviations. And especially, we realize that if we would like to reconstruct perfectly the shape of this first side lobe, or almost perfectly, we would need to take into account the, the first 17 radial orders. And the modes of radial order up to 17, they actually have a further special cutoff. And so their asymptotic shape starts to appear at around 2.3 times larger test distance than the RDE, which is around the Fraunhofer distance. We wanted to apply these findings to actual massive MIMO base stations. Thanks to our Ericsson colleagues, we obtained the E-field measured in magnitude and phase in a compact antenna test range for two commercial radio base stations, RBS-1, operating at 1880 MHz with a radiation aperture of close to 1.4 meter, and RBS-2 operating at 3.5 GHz with an aperture close to 70 cm. You see here the directivity patterns for RBS-1 and RBS-2, represented in logarithmic scale with a 40 dB dynamic in the colors, and this one has a 21.3 dBi peak uh, directivity, and 23.6 dBi peak directivity for RBS2. We then use this measured data as inputs to a method or an algorithm able to simulate measurements at an arbitrary range length. As a step one, we take these E-field measurements in magnitude and phase from the Qatar and two orthogonal components, and with these, we reconstruct equivalent currents on a surface closely encompassing the DUT. Well, you see an example here with RBS-1 at 1880 MHz, where we plot the GZ magnitude and GZ phase, so the electric currents, over a box very close to the DUT surface. As a step two, we take these equivalent currents and apply a near-field transformation to reconstruct E and H fields over a sphere of arbitrary radius R. And then as a step three, we can determine with the following formula, the radiation intensity over the simulated measurement sphere. To calculate the equivalent currents, we use the FIAFTA, Fast Irregular Antenna Field Transformation Algorithm, developed at the chair of High Frequency Engineering of the Technical University of Munich. And this FIAFTA solves an inverse problem with this operator, where the electric and magnetic currents over a surface A surrounding the device under test are then retrieved. The equivalent currents were extracted on the box with two lambda distance around the DUT. The origin of radial distance R was at the center of the antenna aperture. The fields were propagated to the sigma spherical surface of radius R using the multi-level fast multiple method, MLFMM. This slide and the next one show the result of the application of the uh, previously explained process to calculate the radiation intensity as a function of R over lambda, where lambda is the free space wavelength. Here we see the results for RBS1, and uh, these results are normalized to EIRP so that in the far field, we have a zero dB on this plot radiation intensity. What you can see is that the Fraunhofer distance is very far on the graph at around 153 lambda, where RDE gives 53.8 lambda, so much closer in space, and still the deviation from the uh, Fraunhofer distance measurement is extremely small. The 0.5 dB deviation to EIRP is seen already at 32 lambda only. For RBS2 at 3.5 gigahertz, the same is plotted here. And you can see again that the Fraunhofer distance is very far at 126 lambda. Uh, 
at RDE, we have a deviation of less than 0.2 dB, and RDE is only at 45, 46 lambda, and 0.5 dB deviation to EIRP is observed at only around 27 lambda. This table provides a summary of the results we just discussed for RBS1 and RBS2, where you can see that the front offer distance in the case of RBS1 would give a measurement range length necessary to make an accurate far field assessment close to 25 meters, around 153 lambda, and close to 11 meters for RBS2. The RDE distance gives only 8.6 meters necessary for RBS1 and 3.9 meters for RBS2. We can see that the deviation from far field EIRP at RDE is very low, below 0.1 dB for RBS1 and below 0.2 for RBS2. And so looking at a 0.5 dB deviation, we can even go further down in reducing the range length to 5 meter only for the RBS1 and 2.3 meter for RBS2, meaning only 20% more or less of the Fraunhofer distance. We wanted to provide a general interpretation of these results as we found that the effective far field distance for active antenna systems could be seen as even much shorter than the previously identified RDE. For this, we use the plane wave spectrum representation. And for the maths, we consider an X polarized field component propagating in the plus Z direction, where the base station is here at Z below zero. And we look at this EX propagating along Z up to Z equal R. The Fourier relation uh, in this direction relates the spatial field component EX as a function of the plane wave spectrum, depending on KX and KY, the wave numbers along X and Y coordinates. The PWS propagation relates the plane wave spectrum EX hat at any distance R to the plane wave spectrum at z equals zero with this propagator. When we use the stationary phase approximation and combining those two formulas together, we can deduce that the EIRP of the X component is related to the plane wave spectrum uh, component in the center of the spectrum at kx equal ky equal zero. So that is the paraxial plane wave component. And this is the relationship here. The next step in the demonstration was to manage to relate the plane wave spectrum of the array to the plane wave spectrum of an antenna element within the array. Well, this is rather straightforwardly achieved as the field from the array is a linear superposition of the field from all elements. For the sake of simplicity, we assume that the fields from each antenna element was identical, just shifted in space, and that the actual distance separating all elements in X and Y was D, and that we have a rectangular array with M elements in X and N elements in Y. When we put this formula with the square modulus, because we are interested in power transfer over distance, we see that the square modulus of the plane wave spectrum of the array is related to the square modulus of the plane wave spectrum of the element times this filtering function. So here is how the plane wave spectral filtering function of the array looks like along the kx axis. And in blue, you see an example for an array having eight elements in x and in red, 16 elements in the X dimension. And so what is visible here, this is a bandpass filter. So the array reduces, or the array effect is to reduce the spectral bandwidth of the overall antenna. And so when we look at the red case, we see that this filtering function applies more than 13 dB attenuation to all plane waves, which are of KX greater than 0.1 K0 which corresponds to an angle of 5.8 degree with respect to the paraxial propagation or to the normal. So in summary, the array 
tends to isolate the central part of the spectrum and hence make the overall field converge closer to the paraxial plane wave, which is the kx equals zero, ky equals zero uh, component. In conclusion, we presented the recent findings on far-field measurements at distances shorter than the Fraunhofer distance. These findings were applied to two commercial 5GNR FR1 massive MIMO base stations, where the RDE effective far-field distance was found to be conservative by a factor of almost two. This trend was somehow to be expected, as this RDE effective far-field distance was designed to account for all antenna topologies within the minimum sphere containing the DUT. And so planar arrays with controlled feeding of elements represent obviously a much smaller subset. But we went further in the analysis and we used a theoretical approach based on plane waves spectrum analysis to demonstrate that electrically large antenna arrays operate as spectral filters so that the radiated field content gets closer to the far field of a single array element due to the filtering effect of the array. Based on this, we can clearly say that emissions from massive MIMO base stations can be evaluated in the far field at very short distances. And we found in the example cases that we looked at that this distance can be as low as 20% of the Fraunhofer distance, which is around 60% only of the previously established effective far field distance. Thank you very much for your attention.